So something a little bit uh, different today then, I uh, basically got a little uh, 2.4 GHz transmitter and receiver for uh, video here and uh, I've been asked to modify these so we can fit these uh, little dipole antennas so we can get a little bit more range from this. Now I've only got the one so uh, hopefully I won't do anything wrong with this and uh, break it but uh, apparently they're pretty cheap on uh, eBay uh, you know four or five pounds uh, from China uh, not expensive at all and uh, the specs for these are a little bit mixed I've seen uh, some sellers claiming they're only uh, 100 watts and I've seen some other sellers claiming they are uh, 200 watts but uh, we shall see uh, at the moment they look like they've got a little uh, monopole antenna on there so we're going to have to put some kind of SMA uh, adapter onto here remove that little monopole and that way we can uh, stick one of these uh, little dipole antennas on or maybe even a uh, slightly longer one here this is uh, 2.5 dB this is uh, 5 dB here uh, a monopole like this is normally runs at about 2 dB so it's a little bit of an upgrade and it gives a few more options uh, with this little uh, transmitter not sure if you could use this for a uh, quadcopter whether it's powerful enough I don't know but uh, the laws are changing all the time so maybe uh, 100 milliwatts is probably all that you can legally use anyway here in the UK uh, pretty soon I mean uh, they're trying to clamp down on uh, quadcopters many of you and knows been subscribed to me for a while i don't uh, fly quadcopters myself i am only interested in uh, the uh, wireless stuff but let's uh, take a look and see what's inside of these as i say they're pretty cheap on ebay so you get uh, some instructions with this but they're pretty sparse and by the looks of the instructions it's designed to fit on the back of a car so you can have a rear facing camera without any wires and um, there's nothing on the specs on this only that uh, you can put 12 volts directly into these but uh, you get some uh, cables on here you know just pretty much of a uh, length there to connect to the power get your uh, video out cables here this is the uh, transmitter and this one's the receiver but I'm just looking at little uh, monopole antennas here at the moment and just uh, visualizing it with my eye there it looks a little bit short should be 31.25 uh, millimeters around that 31 millimeters uh, in length for uh, 2.4 gigahertz but uh, it does look a little bit short so maybe it protrudes into the case a little bit but we'll have a look when we crack one open so we'll take a look at the transmitter first then we've just got the uh, three screws here to remove so we can uh, open up the case so once you get the screws out the way it splits in half and just looking at the board doesn't look a uh, great deal on this you've got a uh, quite big voltage regulator there obviously for the uh, 12 volts in a uh, car which will have uh, quite a few amps running through it but uh, looking at the monopole now it does look long enough uh, there was quite a bit uh, hidden inside the case there but I'll get a ruler out and take a look at that in a moment just having a quick look at this we can definitely add some kind of uh, SMA connection on there we've got the signal here this monopole uh, has got no ground so uh, which is why it's called the monopole but uh, it looks like there's a ground point there we could use and uh, over on the opposite side there's another ground point there so uh, we can definitely do something with this but we'll probably have to modify the case as well but um, as far as the parts goes I've got a lot of uh, unpopulated parts on this board but uh, it does look pretty similar to those uh, jammers that uh, those uh, little transmitters that I use uh, to make the uh, jammer videos but uh, the only difference with those is they haven't got this big voltage regulator on here they're only uh, 3.5 to 5 volts obviously so uh, it looks probably about the same there and the same kind of chip but uh, got this big voltage regulator on here and of course the LED on here to show this power going to the unit so this is the receiver and you can see it's a uh, a lot different from the uh, transmitter uh, we've got a uh, big voltage regulator again there and uh, a lot of the components are under this shielded can here so we can't take a look at those again there's an LED there uh, unpopulated on the underside just like uh, this one here there's quite a lot of uh, unpopulated components there but um, yeah a little bit different and uh, I'm hoping 
that uh, we've got enough room to add the SMA connector on this side. I may have to modify the SMA connector to get it to fit on this side because of the uh, shielded cam there. We haven't got a lot of room to play with, but there's a couple of ground points we can use there. can always use the uh, shield there as a uh, ground point as well. So uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, options there. It's not uh, going to be an impossible, but uh, probably have to get my Dremel out and do a lot of uh, modifying, especially to the case. And as far as the monopole is concerned, if uh, I was to straighten it out properly, it does look a little bit long, but uh, only by probably about a millimetre, maybe a millimetre and a half. So it's uh, probably about right, but we're definitely going to improve things if we can, uh, you know, modify this to take different antennas. And the connectors that I've decided to use are uh, these ones here. These uh, are designed to uh, fit onto a PCB board. The uh, thickness in there fits nicely on most PCBs. You can uh, solder these ground legs here all around on a double-sided board, for instance. And you've got your uh, signal pin here in the middle. And uh, for modifying something like this, I do like these because uh, you can cut away any legs that you don't want. So you can modify the SMA connector itself as well as the board to make it fit. I do use a lot of these when it comes to uh, modifying and prototyping different things. And they're pretty cheap as well. You can pick a pack of 10 up for uh, around two pounds, uh, three pounds off eBay. So I'm working on the transmitter first and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is desolder this monopole off there and that will give me an idea what room we've got to work with if I've got to modify that SME connector or not. So I think the transmitter is going to be uh, pretty straightforward. Just offering up the SMA uh, connector here you can definitely solder the ground point on this leg to uh, that ground point there. You can solder the signal pin, the center pin, onto here, and it's not going to be too long and protrude and hit anything else on this side of the board. I could probably put a little bit of tin on this leg as well onto that solder point. Let's flip it on the other side and see what we've got to play with on there. And again, this leg's probably not going to do anything, but we can still leave it in place. And uh, hopefully I can get a little bit of tin on there as well on that leg to give it a uh, little bit of strength. And uh, oh, there is a solder point there, so I can actually solder that leg on as well. So I'm going to keep all four legs and uh, hopefully that will be pretty straightforward. So I've got that solid in place now and it's uh, pretty rock solid in there. It's a uh, really strong joint getting all four legs soldered to uh, those ground points as well. And uh, another thing I meant to say is never assume that they are ground points. Get your uh, multimeter out and check continuity because uh, sometimes uh, they don't go anywhere and sometimes they're not actually ground their uh, signal. And I have been caught out a few times in the past so never just assume that they are but uh, the observant among you may also notice that uh, these wires have come away from their solder points there so they weren't soldered on uh, you know uh, very well at all but I could probably do with shortening those wires anyway when I fit it back in the case but um, I'm going to modify the case now so what I think I'm going to do is put the case back together again and drill down through there the same diameter as the SMA connector here, the threads on the SMA, and probably get the Dremel as well and just round off the corners on here so it fits better in the case and then hopefully we don't have to modify the case too much but it um, should be uh, pretty straightforward if I fit the uh, case back together again and then just drill out this hole a little bit wider to fit the SMA. So this modification was uh, pretty straightforward on the transmitter then. You can see I rounded off the uh, SMA connector here getting uh, rid of those sharp edges and if I put this case over the top here it does fit in there quite nicely and I can attach an antenna to that uh, SMA now but what I'm going to do before I finish this off is reattach the cables on this end and shorten them as well. I'm going to shorten these ones as well. There's no need for them to be uh, that long. It just takes up a lot of space on the inside of there. So here's the receiver then. and There's a little bit more room than I uh, first thought, but uh, you can see I've had to modify this SMA connector slightly. I've removed the leg from here altogether 
and because it's basically two boards sandwiched together it's a little bit thicker so I've had to bend that uh, signal pin up a little bit but I can uh, solder it onto the uh, solder point just there and the other three legs I've left in place we've got good connections on the underside of the board to the ground there and a good connection to the ground here so pretty straightforward but uh, a little bit more modification to that one and as for how much power one of these uh, little transmitters puts out I've got uh, 10 dB of attenuation set there so we need to add, add a uh, 100 milliwatts back into this reading here on the power meter so it's putting out uh, around 126 milliwatts there it was up to around uh, 130 milliwatts when I first powered this on but it's been on four or five minutes now it's warmed up slightly and it seems pretty stable at around this figure so not quite 200 milliwatts which I do believe is the uh, legal minimum here in the UK but uh, yeah it's a little bit underpowered if you wanted to use this for a quadcopter but uh, if you weren't going far with your quadcopter you could uh, you know uh, mess one of these up, hack it up and uh, use it on a uh, quadcopter almost certainly uh, if you didn't want to fly very far so it is a uh, cheaper option for that but uh, when you've uh, modified the antenna on one of these there's uh, a lot of possible uh, different projects you could use something like this for now I have got 12 volts running through this at the moment so let's see what it's like if we have a uh, bit of a power drop So we're down at 9.5 volts and it still seems pretty stable. 7.5 and it's starting to lose it there around uh, just under 6 volts. So I'll just up that back up again. So the power drop, uh, you know, if uh, your battery's draining down, is uh, not too bad. I have seen worse, so it is pretty stable. Um, you know if you find a use for this it's a uh, nice little uh, unit so that's uh, both of them uh, modified and I think it uh, turned out uh, quite well uh, better than I was hoping anyway not a great deal of modification to do to the uh, case itself to make it all fit and it does look a lot better now and of course because you've got the SMA connector there you've got a lot more options you can have uh, a bigger dipole antenna on one and a directional antenna on the other just to get more range and of course it's going to be much better than this uh, little piece of wire here and also remember as well it's a common misconception that an antenna is uh, an amplifier in some way it's not uh, all I'm doing by uh, adding a uh, better antenna is making better use of the uh, energy that comes from the uh, transmitter here uh, making better use of that getting it to the receiver so both of these antennas are just uh, you know making better use of that energy and of course because you're making better use of that energy you're getting more distance and uh, a much better signal over that distance as well and of course modifying something uh, as cheap as this and you know it's pretty uh, simple to do just gives you the confidence to uh, have a go at uh, other kind of uh, wireless devices because basically on the inside they're virtually all the same they all have some kind of antenna it's just that sometimes uh, they're actually on a PCB so you've got to do a little bit more with that uh, removing a uh, capacitor most of the time and uh, putting a new signal path in but uh, you know something as simple as this just gives you that bit of confidence to have a go at uh, something else so if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up and uh, any comments or questions drop them below if you were going to use this for say uh, a quadcopter then uh, 100 milliwatts of power isn't going to get you a great deal of range but certainly uh, adding uh, an antenna a better antenna on like this you'll definitely get a bit more range out of it but i think uh, for uh, you know using something like this for a quadcopter there's much better options out there for that